Hello tech world, this is Tech Thoughts. In this video, we'll be setting up a Hyper-V server for lab use and testing. And as always, if you prefer written tech info, the corresponding article for this video can be found on my blog by clicking here or by referencing the comments below. In this particular video, I'll be demoing the GUI, but I'll be executing most of the steps inside PowerShell. And that way you get a feel for how to accomplish things both ways. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we have a, a freshly installed Server 2012 R2 data center. And the nice thing about data center is that uh, as we spin up VMs, they'll automatically authenticate or activate against the, uh, the data center edition of the Hyper-V box. So we don't have to worry about licensing for the VMs that are gonna be in this lab. So the first thing we'll need to do is see uh, currently what's installed on this particular device. So I'll go ahead and execute this PowerShell script here that says get windows feature where the installed equals true. So I'll go ahead and run that by running the selection. And we can see that this is uh, just a standard build, uh, fresh install. There's nothing here uh, out of the ordinary. And note that the Hyper-V role is not currently installed. So that's the first thing that we'll need to take care of. So I'll go ahead and uh, fire up server manager. That way we can uh, show you how to do that through the GUI. So we'll go to manage and we'll add roles and features. Now this is gonna be wizard driven. So it's gonna allow you to do some settings as we, uh, as we progress with this installation. So we'll be selecting a role based and feature based installation. And we'll select the uh, current server that we're logged into. And we'll come down here and select the Hyper-V role and click next. And we won't be adding any additional features at this time. So we'll go ahead and click next. This is just a informational screen. So we'll click next. And as I was saying, since this is wizard driven, you'll get the opportunity to uh, create some things that Hyper-V is going to, to need. Uh, here we'll be uh, given the opportunity to set up some virtual switches. We'll be setting these statically here in a moment in PowerShell. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this at default for now. And just because this GUI is just demo for now. So this screen here uh, is configured around live migration. And uh, since this will be a standalone Hyper-V server in the lab, uh, we won't be utilizing that feature. So we're gonna go ahead and, and leave this at default and click next. Here we have where we set our VHDs for our VMs and where we're gonna be placing our virtual machine configuration files. Again, we'll be setting these statically inside PowerShell here in a moment. So we're gonna leave these as the default and click next since this uh, GUI demonstration is just for demo only. So now we uh, get to the end where you would normally click restart if required because it is required that you restart for Hyper-V installation. And then you would click install and that's the way that uh, Hyper-V is installed through the GUI. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of that since we're gonna be doing it through PowerShell. And we had a lot of different options there through the GUI. Uh, in PowerShell, it's just going to be one line for installing the Hyper-V role. And um, we're, all we're gonna be doing is installing the actual role itself and the management tools associated with that so we get vert management, so we can manage our VMs and create our virtual switches and, and so forth. The reason that um, you don't get as many options here uh, to this is we'll be setting a lot of those different options statically uh, here in a moment through different PowerShell scripts. So. Let's go ahead and get that role installed. So I'll go ahead and just execute this one line. And that'll just take a moment to uh, install the Hyper-V role feature and restart the box. Okay, now the server is back up. And if you encountered any uh, errors during that Hyper-V role ad addition, uh, the most common reason is that virtualization is not turned on your processor in the BIOS. So you may need to reboot, uh, get into your BIOS and make sure that virtualization is enabled uh, appropriately, which is a requirement for Hyper-V role to be added. So now that this is back up, we can go ahead and open up our ISC as an administrator. And we'll get our, our PowerShell configuration file open back up. And now we can rerun this command to see which Windows features are installed. With the addition of that Hyper-V role, note that we now have the Hyper-V management tools as well as the Hyper-V role itself is now installed. So this is now a Hyper-V server and all that's left to do is configure it appropriately uh, for our needs. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be uh, looking at our network adapters to see uh, what we can do with those. And if we look under change adapter settings, note that I have two NICs available on this particular server. Now in your own home lab, you may only have one NIC and that's pretty sufficient uh, for most home lab use just to have one, one gig NIC. But since I have two available here, what I'm actually gonna be doing is teaming these together uh, to take advantage of that uh, failover as well as the additional bandwidth uh, from teaming these two NICs together. So to do that inside of the GUI, what we'll do is we'll minimize all this and come back into server manager. And we'll have to come over to local server here on the left. And note that there is a, uh, a status here for NIC teaming and that it's currently disabled and we'll click on that disabled. So once that comes up, we'll click on tasks here 
and new team. And I'll give that team a name. We'll say public net team or public nick team. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And we'll click additional properties. And I'll go ahead and add both those nicks in. And the additional properties teaming mode is really gonna depend on what kind of switch you're utilizing. So consult your, uh, your switch uh, manufacturer to determine the appropriate settings. Uh, but for my uh, purposes in my lab, I'm gonna be setting this to switch independent and Hyper-V Hyper port. And the standby adapter is gonna be none, all adapters are gonna be active. And I would click okay. And that would create the uh, NIC team through the GUI. So I'll go ahead and close that out and show you how to do that in PowerShell. So I know this looks a little intimidating at first glance, but it's actually not very bad. This first line here is just gonna be getting all the NIC adapters. So if I run this uh, for you as an example, all that's gonna do is actually get the names of the adapters and load them into a variable. So it's gonna get ethernet and ethernet2, and it's gonna load those into this variable nickname here. And then we'll create a new NIC team called public net team uh, with the team members that we just loaded. And we'll set it to switch independent and Hyper-V port like we just did in the GUI no confirmation. Then we'll let the script sleep for about 15 seconds while it builds that NIC team, and then we'll go ahead and set the uh, DHCP to disabled, because we're not gonna be uh, utilizing DHCP, we'll be setting the IP information statically. And then I have a bunch of variables here for setting uh, different static IP information, like the primary IP, the net mask, primary gateway, and the two DNS entries. So we'll go ahead and get those loaded into the new public NIC team, and then we'll set the DNS. And that's the, the ultimate configuration. So all we're really doing with this portion of the script is uh, creating the NIC team, calling it public NIC team, and setting the uh, static IP information. Uh, really simple stuff. So we'll go ahead and execute this portion of the script, and that'll momentarily kick us out as it builds that NIC team, and we'll just wait for that to complete. Okay, so the NIC team has finished creating. You notice that we have uh, a new public NIC team with the members Ethernet2 and Ethernet and switch independent Hyper-V port. And it was down, but that's because it was initially created. So we can go ahead and get net LBFO team. And notice that uh, now that it's been created, it is now currently status up. And if we pull a get net adapter, notice now that we have a new NIC called public net team, which is the uh, giving us a, a aggregated uh, link speed of two gigs because we combine those two one gig NICs. And if we come in through the GUI, we can also see inside network connections that we now have a public net team. Notice that if I look at the adapters now under properties, um, there is no IPv4 protocol now under this adapter, and there also is no IPv4 uh, protocol under this adapter uh, because these are no longer being utilized in that fashion. They've been teamed together, and that uh, information is now being handled by the public net team. So our actual IP information is loaded here, uh, on the public net team. So this is our adapter now. So looking back at the script, our next step is gonna to be to create a new virtual switch. So now that we have the Hyper-V role installed, I'll go ahead and pull up this window screen and we'll type in Hyper-V. And I'll go ahead and pin this to start since I'll probably be using that quite a bit and also pin it to the taskbar and we'll come back to the desktop. Okay, so then here it is down here and I'll go ahead and click on that. And this is going to be the main console that you're going to be interfacing with uh, to do all of your Hyper-V management. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to create a virtual switch. And so we'll click on this virtual switch manager, which is on the right side here. And that's going to allow us to create a new virtual switch. And we can determine if that's external or it's going to allow traffic outside of the uh, Hyper-V box. Internal, and that's going to be Hyper-V to VM only. And then private, which is just VM to VM. So we're gonna be creating external because this is gonna be our, our management, um, the way we interface with the Hyper-V server. And we're gonna create a virtual switch. But you just give it a name, we'll just call it VM switch for now. So we'll go ahead and select external network since we're gonna be allowing traffic to pass out of the Hyper-V server. And we're going to leave the allow management operating system to share this network adapter checked because we want to be able to RDP to this Hyper-V server through this physical network adapter. By unchecking this, you're essentially telling, uh, you're isolating the traffic uh, from the operating system on this physical network adapter, and you will not be able to, uh, it makes it more difficult to manage the Hyper-V box. So there are some security reasons that you would wanna do that, but since this is a home lab environment, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this checked for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm gonna click okay, and that would create the VM switch, uh, and you would see it over here. So we're not gonna do that uh, through the GUI, we're gonna click cancel, minimize this, and we're gonna do that through PowerShell. 
So here I have a short one line that's going to do a create new virtual switch and just going to create a new VM switch. It's going to call it um, public v switch. It's going to be associated with the public net team and we are going to allow that management OS and we're not going to confirm. So I'm just going to run this real fast by selecting here. And that's going to momentarily disconnect us as it's going to kind of create a new uh, virtual NIC adapter and that's going to cause a momentary loss of connection. Okay, and that's finished now. And what I want to show you real fast is that when we come into the adapter settings, note that we now have a new public v switch, which according to the script that I just created is the name that I gave it, public v switch. And note that uh, if we look at the public net team now and come down, that whereas before we had IPv4 and our IP information was associated with that public net team, that is no, no longer the case. We've added a, another layer of virtualization here. And if we come to properties in this uh, v Ethernet switch, we now have the IPv4 protocol here with our static IP information being transferred from that public net team to this virtual adapter. Okay, now that our network is configured the way we like, I'm going to go ahead and minimize all that, and I want to take a moment to configure my storage on this server. So I'm going to go ahead and open up diskmanagement.msc. And with disk management open, I'm going to uh, get these formatted uh, so that I can get my VMs loaded. So here we have our C drive for you know the Hyper-V OS. And what I have here on this is I'm going to have uh, some extra storage to add secondary drives for my VMs. So I'm going to call it, leave this D for data. I'm going to format it. Allocation is going to be to default, and this is going to be VM data drives. So for secondary data drives, if I want to add additional storage to my VMs. I'm going to perform a quick format, click next. And I'm going to go ahead and this one here, the zero is uh, my SSDs where the actual VMs themselves are going to live. So I'm going to format this. I'm going to call it V for VMs. And I'm going to give this a 64K allocation unit size, which Microsoft kind of recommends is the best practice for running VMs off of. I'm going to call this VMs and perform a quick format. So my VMs will actually be living on disk zero, on drive V, and any additional drives that I want to attach to my, my VMs are going to live on the slower D drive for VM data drives. So that's the way I'm going to provision my storage. So now that I've got those set up correctly, I'm going to come in here, just make sure that my drive letters are showing good, and they are. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new folder, and I call it VM data drives so I can store stuff inside of there. And under VMs, I'm going to create a folder called VMs, and I'm going to create another folder called VHDs. And I'll show you why in just here in a second. So now we'll open up our ISE window again. So these two lines here are going to set the defaults for where our VMs are going to be created at. The first line is going to set where our virtual hard disk path, our VHDs, are going to live. And the second one is going to set us to where the actual uh, virtual machine configuration files and stuff are going to live. So I'm going to change this path um, because this is going to live on the V drive. And we're going to say V drive VHDs. That's the folder that we created a second ago. So V drive VHDs, that's where I want my VHD files to be stored at. And here, I'm going to change this to V VMs, which is the folder that we just created, V VMs. So when I run this, what I want to show you what's going to happen is that when I go to create a new virtual machine, note that when I click Next, that it wants to store the virtual machine in C program data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. That's the default location that the, uh, the Hyper-V manager wants to store that VM. So when I execute these two commands in PowerShell, what that's going to actually do is set those paths as the default in Hyper-V manager. So if I come back in here now and create new virtual machine and click next, note, thou, note now that it's going to store the VM and VVMs. So if we go through a quick process here and just create a practice VM, so we'll say practice VM. We'll click next. We're going to make this a generation two. We're going to start it with 1024 and use dynamic memory. Click next. We're going to give it the public V switch that we created earlier. 
click next. And notice here in the location for the actual VHDX, it's gonna store in VVHDs. We don't need it to be 127 gigs, we just need it to be 60. We'll click next. Then we'll install an operating system later, since this is just a quick tutorial, and we'll click finish. And note now that after it finishes uh, provisioning this new VM that we've just uh, created, that if we come into our virtual machine under VMs, the configuration of the VM is actually located here. So all of our configuration information for that VM and the actual VHD X is going to be stored under that VHD folder that we provisioned. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, really quick, easy setup uh, via GUI and via PowerShell on how to get Hyper-V installed in your lab. And now you've created a practice VM. You can go ahead and load a uh, operating system onto that really quickly just by connecting. And you can really easily just connect a, an ISO to this. Um, if it doesn't have a DVD, uh, DVD drive because we didn't provision one, it's as simple as going to file and settings. And we just add a hardware and you can add a DVD drive. So now with the DVD drive added, it's as simple as coming to media and inserting an ISO file right here. So you just have to pick an ISO file, load the OS, and you're ready to start practicing in your Hyper-V lab environment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.